Hello all. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Jeremy. I'm a nature photographer. I've come to northeastern Pennsylvania to try to get some pictures of waterfalls, uh, especially refracted waterfalls. And uh, we'll see how it goes. If I have extra time, I'll probably do some, um, do some wildlife photography as well. So behind me, uh, I don't know if you can really see it, there's a water feature I've photographed twice now. Uh, it just keeps bringing me back. The first time I was here, I didn't have a good landscape lens and I didn't like the photograph the way it turned out. Uh, it just wasn't sharp in the foreground. So I came back last fall, but the water was so high that I couldn't get the composition that I wanted. So now I'm here again, it's oh, almost 6.30, I'm burning good light. So I need to get to work. <laughs> I try to show the world from an angle that's different from what humans normally see. I like to engage with subjects at their level and try to take photographs from that perspective. I don't know if you can hear this, but I just wanted to show where I got stuck last time I was here. Last October, when I came up to photograph the falls, the water was much, much higher. It doesn't look half as dangerous as it did back in October, so here's hoping. When I'm out exploring, I'm always very aware of the risks that I take. I'm constantly trying to think of all of the things that could go wrong. I move very slowly and deliberately, thinking through my actions to make sure that I don't end up in a situation that I can't get myself out of. I've been rewarded with an incredible sight. Truly worth the effort. This location was beautiful and I loved spending time there, but the light just really didn't work out. Having a heavy pack on my back makes everything I do more difficult. Choosing what to bring with me becomes a compromise of balancing the weight I carry against bringing the tools I need to complete the tasks I've set for myself. For this day, I ended up having to carry about 40 pounds of gear. I cannot believe this. So I'm only 
I don't know, maybe 500 feet upstream from the last waterfall, and I found this incredible place. Unfortunately, there's a tree down in front of the waterfall, but I'm still hoping to be able to get some shots. Unfortunately, this is where the journey ends for today. There's no way I'm gonna be able to climb that cliff with all that weight on my back. So, it's been about six hours. I think it'll take me about six hours to get back to camp. I should probably turn around anyway. It's been an amazing day. While the explorative part of the day was over, the return journey was just beginning. On my way back, I noticed that a waterfall I'd passed earlier was now in perfect light to take the refraction photograph that I wanted. refer to refraction photography, I'm talking about using water droplets as a kind of rudimentary lens to capture what's happening behind them. It's a rather technical and difficult concept to explore, but the results can be astounding. success creating these images before, but in the past I was never able to get my shutter speed fast enough to freeze the motion of the falls and give the water texture. That's why on this trip I'm trying to photograph a waterfall in full daylight. I'm hoping that it'll be bright enough for me to get the shutter speed I need. So this is the first evening of my northeastern Pennsylvania trip. Um, I want to see if my plan for photographing macro refractions of uh, mountain laurel is going to work or not, and uh, see what critters are around and about this spring. From a previous trip, I knew there was a section of trail with thickets of mountain laurel on both sides. I was hoping that there would be a corridor of flowers, but unfortunately most of the plants weren't in bloom yet. With time short and the light fading, I ended up abandoning my plans for a refraction photo so I could focus my energy on other goals. So I was following a moth around with my secondary camera and it led me straight to this beautiful caterpillar. So I figured I'd give it a try and see if I could get a shot. Oh, 
He's moving. That's going to make my life more difficult. The light is so much better now. And I really, really, really hope I can get a good shot out of this. By the time I was done photographing the caterpillar, there wasn't enough light left for wildlife photography, so I ended up calling it a day. So this is the second full day of my uh, northeastern Pennsylvania trip. Yesterday I was able to accomplish my critical goal of getting a refraction photograph of a waterfall. So now that I've done that, I can relax a bit. I'm going to take today and I'm going to go explore some trails I've never been on and um, look for some wildlife. Yesterday there was a lot of butterfly activity, so I'm hoping to see more of them today and, uh, you know, fingers crossed. Um, the guidebook that I've been following did warn that this trail is difficult to see and a little bit neglected. Unfortunately, that seems to be the uh, <laughs> understatement of the century. So it's going to be, it's going to require a lot of concentration to not get lost today. But this is the trail that I wanted to be on, and I'm not really convinced that it is. Um, there's no signage or blazes or anything like that back here for me to check myself on, unfortunately. But anyway, uh, if I am where I think I am, later on today I should see some old foundations, and some um, and an old uh, old railroad bridge. There used to be a lot of industry up here based around ice making. Uh, before before mechanical refrigeration was a thing, uh, the lakes up here were some of the first that were used to supply ice to New York and Philadelphia. Uh, due to their altitude and proximity, it made them uh, really convenient. I'm hoping that I'll be able to show you some of the remnants of that history today. So I've come across a meadow and I decided to stop and uh, photograph some of the bugs and the flowers. The large wildflowers don't really seem to be in bloom yet, but there's tons of uh, really small flowers close to the ground that uh, I want to I want to try to photograph and try to capture some of this beauty. One of the big struggles in macro photography is conveying scale. The high magnification and the focal length of the lens tends to compress the image optically, and it makes it really difficult to show just how small things are unless you show them in context. So I'm going to try to do more wide shots today, uh, showing more of the, uh, the habitat of my subjects in order to show that scale. sun's come out, and that's actually bad news for me, because it means uh, this light has gotten quite harsh. It's now about 11 o'clock in the afternoon. I've been in this field for probably an hour now. Uh, it's been very productive, but um, this light just isn't good. So I think it's time for me to move on. Um, I still want to see those ruins, too. I cannot believe my luck. I was just walking along the trail and noticed this orb weaver had placed its web all the way across the trail. Um, and I wanted to take some pictures of it before I moved on. And as I was taking 
the shots through its web, uh, a moth flew right into the web. And um, I got some great photos of the, uh, of the moment as it happened and of the aftermath. And I'm trying to get some video of it for you too. So we'll see, hopefully it turns out. One of the problems I've been having trying to film and photograph this orb weaver is that every time the wind blows, it throws the web all over the place. Um, my cameras aren't really suited to video. And this one in particular, uh, it's uh, kind of infamous for its terrible autofocus. And even if it did have autofocus, my the macro lens I'm using is manual only. So without really being able to see what I'm doing, I can't really get action shots of uh, the spider and keep him in focus, so I'm going to have to just uh, cut it all together after the fact and hope it turns out. It's almost 2 o'clock, and I'm heading back to camp. Uh, I want to take advantage of this daylight to get my solar panel out and recharge some of my camera batteries. And I pushed really hard yesterday, um, which left me kind of sore and tired, and I want to save some energy for tomorrow. So I might go out later again tonight after the batteries have charged. Might not. See how I feel. Still day two of my northeastern Pennsylvania trip, uh, I decided to go back out and just do some exploring. I have no idea what's around on this trail. I just figured I'd check it out and we'll see. I've been out here for about two hours. Um, and I was just after that initial swamp, I really haven't found anything down this trail that's a suitable subject for photography. So I think I'm just gonna chill and enjoy the forest and not really pressure myself with creating. And, uh, yeah, and then I'll probably head back to camp. It's been a really great second day, another productive day. Probably got at least one picture that I'll probably end up printing. Um, and I still have one more full day out here before the trip's over. So it's been, <laughs> it's been a great trip. I mean, one print, one print from a three day trip would be amazing. And I really think I've got at least three. Day three, I went back to a place I'd been to previously where I'd had success taking refraction photographs of a waterfall. Last time I was there, I photographed the upper section of the falls. This time, I wanted to photograph the lower. The site is surrounded on all sides by steep slopes and cliffs, making it really difficult to get to. I ended up having to hike down the river gorge to find a place where it was safe for me to descend. It took me a while to find a suitable site, but once I was down in the gorge, I was able to backtrack to the waterfall. I've been avoiding it because there's a bit of a path along the edge of the river, but I think it's time I put the waders on. I 
I tried to avoid wearing waders because even though they allow you to go places you wouldn't otherwise be able to get to, uh, they can pose a safety hazard. So if you do have to wear waders, make sure you always wear them with a belt on the outside of the waders so that if you swamp, if water starts flowing into the waders, they don't fill up and drag you to the bottom because they can absolutely pose a drowning hazard. So I'm just gonna be safe. And while that won't necessarily stop the waders from filling, it'll give me a chance to respond and uh, you know, do the same for you. So safety first, definitely, especially out here, safety first. The lower falls were beautiful, but unfortunately, the light just didn't really work. I needed the falls to be fully illuminated in order to get the shutter speed necessary to take the refraction photo that I wanted, and they were mostly in shadow. I looked at the canopy and I just, I didn't think that the light was going to change in the way that I needed. I tried taking some landscape photos as well, but with the falls being dark and the forest behind being bright, it just didn't look good. It didn't look natural and cohesive. I ended up deciding that my time would be better spent by going back to where I was the day before and making another attempt at finding these ruins. This is day three, part two. Uh, I've come back to the trail I was on yesterday. I did some reading last night and I think it actually was the right path. So I'm giving it another try. I lightened my load a lot. Um, I really pushed myself on day one because I wanted to get the critical shots taken care of. I wanted to get at least the refraction photo and uh, I'm paying for it. Um, I tried to take it a little easier on day two and now I've slimmed my load down for day three, carrying less weight, hoping that I can make it to the part of the trail, part of this trail that I'm interested in with the ruins and the stream. A trip to the ruins was about four miles each way. I knew I'd have to move fast if I was gonna make it out before the sunset. I've come upon some of the old foundations that the guidebook mentioned. Um, it's pretty crazy to think that there was ice flowing out of these hills into Philadelphia and New York on freight trains and you know, it's just it's all been reclaimed by nature I was looking to capture an image that told some of the story of the region's history. The foundations weren't really suited to photography overgrown as they were. I just didn't see a viable composition, so I moved on in hopes that I would be able to reach the rail bridge that was mentioned in the guidebook. It seemed like it could be a suitable subject. Unfortunately, <laughs> I'm not at the rail bridge yet. And it's now quarter to four, my 15 minutes before I need to turn around if I'm gonna make it out before sunset. And I need to make it out before sunset. These trails are just too difficult to see. So we'll see. I mean, that's kind of the bummer about only having three days on a location. You know, I set goals and try to be realistic with my goals, but, uh, at the end of the day, I'm just one person, and my resources are extremely limited. There's only so much I can fit in. And it looks like this one might not make it. So, it's now four o'clock. I have to turn around. Uh, I did pass over an old rail grade and the place where there used to be a bridge. My guidebook is 10 years out of date, and then some, so there's a good chance that the bridge just doesn't exist anymore. Um, 
Not really much to photograph out here, but it's been a lovely adventure and a fun hike. And, uh, you know, it's a beautiful place. So yeah, time to go back. So I'm on my way out, I stopped for a drink and I just wanted to put today into a little bit of context. You know, it could be odd to see, uh, to see a day where nothing really happens. I guess a lot of creators don't really show that to you. But that's the reality of nature photography and wildlife photography. There's just so many things that need to line up. The light has to be right. The, the wildlife has to be present. Uh, you, you have to get lucky and get the right weather and, and there's a thousand factors. Most of the days I do are complete washes. And it's not always about getting the shots. Uh, you know, sometimes it's about seeing places you've never been, just going for a nice hike, uh, being out in the woods, putting yourself out there to see if things will happen around you. The more time I spend out in the woods, the more likely it is that I'll see the sorts of things that I want to see, that I'll run into a bear or an opossum or uh, a raccoon. This might seem like a downer to end on a day where I didn't really get the shots that I wanted, but it's not. This has been an amazing trip and I can't wait to get home and see what I got. Uh, you know, like this is my first time that I've ever done anything with video. I bought the little pocket camera that I'm recording this on the day before I left. Uh, I haven't ever really seen any of the footage it makes yet. And, um, you know, I've never really done anything with video. I have no idea how any of the stuff I shot is going to look. So I'm really excited to see how this turns out and uh, see where this goes. So I really wasn't prepared to make this video. And, you know, it was a lot of fun going out in the field and doing videography for the first time, really. Um, but I made a lot of mistakes that I wasn't able to repair after the fact due to limitations of my equipment and, you know, my own lack of experience. So I do apologize for all of the segments that are improperly exposed and out of focus. Um, and now that I know what the problems are, I'll be able to take steps to rectify them in the future. Despite all of that, I really hope this video gave you an idea of what goes into nature photography and gave you a window into what it's like in a day of the life of a nature photographer.